Hello, I am Stefano Catena and I wish to introduce the paper Virtual Acousmonium, a study on expressiveness of musical gestures that I've been working on together with my colleague Andrea Bolzoni from Milan's conservatory. This work is part of my master's final exam and has been the result of experimentation during the first COVID lockdown. The first important question is to define what an acousmonium is. It is a music diffusion system, also known as the loudspeaker orchestra, where a large number of different speakers are placed strategically in space, each with their own frequency response. The performers of acousmatic music have access to the potential of the acousmodium through the mixing console. By controlling the speaker's volume, they can decide both the movement and the coloring of the sound, giving their own personal imprint on the music. The acousmonium was developed at the Groupe de Recherche Musicale by François Bale and premiered in Paris in 1974, even though a similar idea was also implemented by Clausier with the Kmebaphone in 1973. Implementing a virtual acousmonium allows those who do not have access to a real acousmonium to experiment and rehearse performances in a similar environment. This idea has been developed before us, but in our case, we have preferred to emulate a specific physical acousmonium and to evaluate different spatial gestures performed inside this virtual space. Our virtual acousmonium is modeled specifically after the Sator acousmonium, which is situated in Milan at the Centro San Fedele and was developed by Raldo Bocca. It consists of different types of speakers distributed along three concentric crowns and a stage section for a total of 48 channels. The virtual acousmonium instead was developed with the SuperCollider programming language and relies on specialization libraries based on ambisonics. The basic idea for the recreation of an acousmonium was to emulate the desired number of speakers, place them in a virtual space and color the frequency response based on the position and type of speaker. Each of these speakers receive a stereo audio signal and through a series of equalization, delays, reverberation and spatialization, they will emulate the speakers chosen in the virtual space. Given the configuration of the Acousmonium Sator, we opted for a narrower recreation than the large number of speakers actually on site. In total, 27 virtual speakers have been created and to be more precise, one subwoofer, six coloring speakers, six full range speakers, four internal crown speakers, four external crown speakers and six super tweeters. These virtual speakers are placed in space in accordance with the arrangement of the Acousmonium Sator. In particular, to create the echo effect, a great distance from the listener is emulated through delay time, reverberation and amplitude scaling. To differentiate between the virtual speakers, one of the most important aspects is equalization. The signal is firstly delimited in the high and low frequencies, and then a three-band equalization with individual gain is applied. To give the sound more liveliness, the frequencies and gains of the three parametric equalizer for each speaker are slightly randomized, creating a phasing effect also between the left and right channels for each family of speakers. The specialization of each virtual speaker or group of speakers is made with third order ambisonics, both for binaural rendering and for quadraphonic reproduction. These two solutions are particularly suitable in the studio, as ambisonics is a technology that can quickly switch between the two decoding techniques, but it requires the listener to be positioned in a very well-defined sweet spot. The idea of this work has been to test spatial gestures in the implemented environment. Gesture is intended as movement, in this case of sound inside the virtual acousmonium, with its own specific meaning. Two different typologies of gestures are proposed. Compositional gestures, the musical gestures within the work that can be observed spectromorphologically, that is by studying how the sound is articulated over time timbrically, dynamically and rhythmically. Or interpretative gestures, the musical gestures and spatial movement produced by the acousmatic interpreter during the performance. In particular, we will cover more specifically the interpretative gestures. In the musical and perceptual context, we mentally track sound with any effect or organ, hands, fingers, arms, etc. This means that from listening we move our body according to the type of sound to which we are subjected. The opposite can also happen, that specific gestures and movement may generate sounds in our imagination. In the acousmatic listening context and in Schaeffer's treatise of musical object, the gestural and metaphorical concepts can relate to the idea of embodied cognition, and every domain of human perception can be connected to movements or images of movements. 
By applying this concept to the Schafferian sound objects, one can define the so-called sound gestural objects, where the relationship between sound and movement is paramount. Gestural components can be applied to different sounds interchangeably. A tremolo can be applied to both a violin sound or the sound of the pouring rain. We can therefore say that they have a certain degree of abstraction, they are transferable from one domain to another. All the characteristics of sound gestural objects can be indeed applied to the concept of space and spatiality, in particular to the acousmonium interpretation and acousmatic music as well. In our case, two different gestures have been tested and automated on the acousmonium, the crossfade and the wave. The crossfade is a slow movement between two pairs or groups of speakers. The wave is a round trip that moves between a series of speakers, for example from the backstage to the front stage, passing from the side speakers. Five different interpretations for each of the two gestures have been programmed to test their effectiveness inside the virtual acousmonium environment, as it was important to try and include all its various micro-areas. In order to collect data for future developments, we ran a preliminary evaluation with five students in electronic music composition, one bachelor and four masters. They were sent three of the five interpretations for each gesture, six audio files in total, and a questionnaire. The audio files were labeled with the name of the gesture and an incremental number, for example, crossfade 1. The questionnaire reported the gesture's description and a list with the five description of the interpretation. For each audio file, we ask them to pair it with one of the interpretations and evaluate their confidence in matching the audio with the description through a Likert scale from 1 to 5. The results obtained from the virtual implementation of the Acousmonium can be considered moderately satisfactory. In particular, the movements that included the side speakers are very effective and have been recognized consistently by the testers. Gestures that include a front-rear movement instead have been confusing, as shown by the results of their questionnaire. The unclear distinction between back and front, however, is typical of binaural technology. This confusion is often a problem of these renders due to the ambiguous interaural cues and therefore relying only on monoaural spectral differences. Some testers have pointed out how it is harder to recognize certain movements at first glance, while it takes some time to get used to the binaural rendering. This is especially true for front-rear movements. While the directionality of the movement has been easier to identify, it was much harder to recognize the difference between front and back. This is also shown by the fact that all testers have misidentified wave 1 with wave 4 and, in fact, nobody has correctly recognized wave 4. This can be attributed to the similarities in the gestures, but also on the fact that both rely on the frontal movements and are prone to the confusion with rear movements. It is also noticeable how all the testers have recognized correctly wave 5, where only lateral movements are present. This paper presented the development of a virtual acousmonium and the first approach to the study and automation of musical gestures in space applied to this system. This tool is not intended in any way to replace the acousmonium, but to be a tool to help students, teachers and acousmatic composers interested in this area of interpretation. In addition to the interesting compositional applications, the possibility of automating gestures allows the system to be configured also for educational purposes. In particular, it can be effective for training in the listening of gestures in the form of ear training, or the possibility of imitating and practicing gestures, displaying them through its GUI, with the aim of acquiring them for a later use in performance. From an implementation point of view, the use of ambisonics to replace real speakers is a significant limitation. It is difficult to simulate the irradiation diagram and the directivity of the individual speaker. Physical speaker cabinets have non-linear radiation patterns, which are impossible to reproduce in a virtual environment with ambisonics. In the future, other key improvements will be introduced. The implementation of a spectrogram and general improvement of the GUI. The implementation of a unified system for creation, editing and use of virtual speaker configuration. A tool for visualizing the speakers in space for visual feedback. The possibility of recording a performance or parts of a performance. In addition, a more thorough testing of the system will be performed. Thank you very much for listening.